Hi there and welcome to the Sue Rayner Drawing Channel on YouTube and welcome to my very messy, cramped studio. <laughs> um, today I'm going to talk about watercolours. Uh, people keep asking me about watercolours um, and uh, so this is kind of a, 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 a get you started in watercolours. You do not need to spend lots of money, okay? So I don't want you to feel, <laughs> oh I can't do that because it's going to cost a lot. Uh, there's a place in England uh, called The Works, which you can go down to, and you, you can get a really cheap set like this. Uh, this is £3.99 in England, uh, which is probably about f $5, $5.50 or something in the States. And um, and it's really cheap. You get a, a little well, you know, thing for, for mixing in. You get a brush, you get some colours, uh, and these are liquid uh, watercolours. Um, and you get black, you can throw that away immediately. Uh, black, black is not good in watercolours. Um, uh, you get a great big tube of white, which you can mm, put aside. Um, you don't really want to use white. You've got nice colours. You've got crimson, ultramarine, burnt umber, sap green, cerulean blue, yellow, ochre, lemon yellow and vermilion. Okay, so there you can do a lot with those colours. Um, the secret of watercolour is that the light, that the, all paintings, right, all pictures, everything that you see, what happens is light comes along, bounces off something and reflects back. And depending on the wavelength that it reflects back, that's the colour that you see, okay? Um, if you get paint, let me find a little piece of paper. If you get a bit of paint and you splat it on like that, solid like that then that is what happens there is the light is coming down reflecting immediately off the paint and that's what you see with watercolors what happens is the light comes down it reflects off the white of the paper and shines through the wet watercolor glazes that you lay on the top imagine that the paper is a light look this is my light box Imagine it is a light box and there is physically a light shining behind it. Um, and, and what you have is this light coming through over which you put transparent glazes. Okay, so let's see how that works. Always losing the brush, knocking over the microphone. <laughs> you just need a jam jar of water. You don't need anything expensive. Anything, a mug, a cup, anything, an old yogurt pot, doesn't matter just water okay and then I'm going to uh, gonna get a little bit of red pop that there you don't need much because it's the water that does the job that's why they call watercolors okay maybe the last time you ever used watercolors was you know when you were about five you probably used that horrible um, paste you know the, the powder paints or something like that this is very very different so you're mixing the red with water and you're painting with the very wet waterness. Now is that showing up? That should do. What you want to do is pick out an area that you want to shade and so I'm going to, th this is the first lesson you need to do which is um, creating a nice smooth wash which might be difficult with these paints because they're not that expensive. And just, just dab in, just load the brush up and try not to disturb this water because it will all the sediment all the the color pieces in it will drop to the bottom so if you can avoid shaking it all up and just sort of taking it off the top then that is good uh, because then you'll just be putting on color rather than kind of little grainy bits of color and I can see this is a little grainy and I'm and I'm keeping it wet. I'm drawing it down. So there's this trough of wet wetness there at the bottom. I hope you can see. And taking it down slowly, 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 till you get to the bottom. And when you get to the bottom, get it all neat and tidy. And this is something else you can get: it's kitchen towel, which is. Amazing stuff for watercolor painters. I don't know what they ever did before. And then you just kind of use the brush to 
kind of take off the excess liquid at the bottom and then let it keep draining down. You want your board at an angle just to keep keep it coming down like that. Okay, so that's with that one. Now I'm going to show you my, the paints that I use. And this is, uh, I've had this tin for, oh, <laughs> how old am I? I don't know. I must be 30 years at least. And these are, these are called half pans. A full pan is two sizes. So let me show you. This is a, this is a pan. This is a half pan. If you put two together, you can get them exactly the same. That, but that shape, and that'll be called a full pan. Okay. And then you pull this thing. Where are we now? I should be on this side. You, you pull the, uh, you pull that out. Oh, you need to pull that out as well. Drop in your pan, like that, and then replace those, and that's how they fit in. And what I like to use, if you really want to spend money, is Da Vinci, Maestro, Tobolsky, Kalinsky. <laughs> These are sable brushes. The best watercolour brushes are made of sable, which is a squirrel, I think. Squirrel tail hairs or something. And, um, and they are just the best. They don't last as long. And, uh, but they're just... Well, you have to kind of use them to know why, what the difference is. But you can see, I did a perfectly good job up there. And uh, probably find I better did a better job than I'm going to do now. So, so here I'm going to do exactly the same and keep that moist sort of trough of water at the bottom and just keep pulling it down, down at the corner, down at the edge, down at the edge, and keep pulling it. Keep making sure that there's lots of moisture on there. Moisture, liquid, whatever. Oh, it's got some dirt in there. Because I'm hurrying. This is about the third time I've filmed this, so I'm getting <laughs> frustrated. <laughs> There's been all sorts of technical problems. So, there we go. And, um, and I would like you to... Is it, I'm trying to get that off there. I would like you to just do this. Draw lots and lots of squares and just practice. I learned this at the land registry when I worked there many years ago and I used to draw maps to show who owned which houses and things like that. And we spent about a week practicing these um, these washers before they let us loose and doing it full time. And, 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 and I think it's like if you're learning to play the guitar, you learn three chords and that kind of, that's your basis that you kind of start off with. I think doing a watercolour wash is the kind of very basis, very basic thing that gets you into understanding how the paint works and 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 it's kind of the basic kind of thing that you will do in watercolour. Um, and so try doing tr tricky shapes and things like that and just getting the feel of watercolour. So I think that's all. I will do more lessons about paper, I will do more lessons about brushes, uh, I'll do more lessons about different kinds of things. So uh, keep coming back. I'll put, I'll put a link at the end for, for there'll be a watercolour playlist. <laughs> and um, keep coming back for more. And uh, let me know. If you're having problems, let me know what, what you need to know. Uh, put your comments in the box below. Uh, tell me how you're getting on in the comments below. Um, and keep coming back to the Shoe Rain and Drawing channel on YouTube. <laughs> in the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Water colouring, water colouring, water colouring, washing, 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 and practicing, practicing, practicing. That is the key to it all. Uh, in the meantime, <laughs> you take care of yourselves. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye bye. For example, follow a given route to your daily work or to some other place that you frequently visit, and very soon the path is informed, and your mind will lead you over that route without thought on your part. Moreover, if you start out with the intention of travelling in another direction, without keeping the thought of the change in routes constantly in mind, you will still find yourself following the other route.